Well, hi. This has been the kind of week where you've gone to a cafe with some friends because you haven't had breakfast, and this is the only place nearby that serves food. Your friends find an outside table, and you agree to go to the counter to order all of the food by your sen. The assistant starts piling up a tray for you, and it's getting pretty crammed on there, but you can manage, right? But as you carry the tray back to the glass door, you see an elderly woman on the other side. You just manage to balance the tray while you hold the door open for the old dear, and she comes through, followed by a mother pushing a pram, a couple so in love they hardly notice you, several others, and finally, a young girl with hiccups, whose sudden involuntary torso spasm rocks the door, causing you to titter of kilter and... <sighs> drop one item splat on the floor. Yours, of course. Oh well. You leave the tray with your friends and head back to the counter for a replacement. But the queue is now massive, and you wait ages only to reach the counter and be told they've now completely run out of food. Desperately hungry, you head back outside to where your friends have all just finished eating. Of course, they would have saved you some if they'd known. You know what I mean? War Graticast. Episode 4, How to Lose Your Rag. Now, some of you may recall me saying that I had some things to look forward to this week, including some hang gliding and a visit to a very playful friend of mine. I had one more day of hang gliding training to go, and then I would collect my first stage pilot license. It really is an amazing feeling. I would recommend it to anyone. There's nothing like being strapped to a ginormous kite with a crotch clutching harness to leave your body and your senses and the pitch of your voice all ending up on a high. I'm currently training with the South Downs Hang Gliding School because their instructors, John and Matt, are some of the most experienced in the world. The downside is that, well, the South Downs is a bit far from Cambridge, but that's my fault for living in a land that doesn't have any faults geologically speaking. Since I was heading in that direction, I very happily agreed to collect the mother-in-law of a pal of mine so she could be back here for her granddaughter's bar mitzvah. Now this was going to add about an hour to my journey, so to make sure I was back in time for that evening's performance of Godspell, I knew I'd have to leave about half two at the latest. But that shouldn't have been a problem because most of my midweek sessions at the hang gliding school normally finished about two or three. But when I arrived, my instructor told me that the weather wouldn't be ready for trainee flights until half past one. This meant that after about 30 minutes of setting up the hang glider, I would have just enough time to take down the hang glider. So my final lesson was a no-go. What's more, since it were my arrangements that had scuppered the day, I would now have to pay for an extra day's training. So you can imagine I felt pretty miserable when I went to pick up my friend's mother-in-law. By agreeing to pick her up because I was in the area, I had inadvertently eliminated my reason for being in the area. Still, I had the visit to my very playful friend to look forward to. Now, this was actually her end-of-course performance showcase at Mount View Drama School. Naturally, I ordered some flowers to wish her luck and spared no expense on the arrangement, and paid extra to the courier to guarantee they'd be delivered to her at the theatre before 12 o'clock, so before her showcase began. As it turned out, I arrived pretty much bang on 12 o'clock and just thought I'd ask at the box office whether some flowers had arrived. Of course they hadn't. So I spent the next hour on the phone to the florist trying to chase this up, having to use a free phone number, which on a mobile mutates into a we're draining your bank account and repossessing your socks kind of number. All the while, I was watching other bouquets arrive for other members of the showcase. Now, Playful didn't know I was there, she didn't even know her mum was there. She could have gone to that stage thinking no one was there to support her. Of course, it didn't affect her performance, which was phenomenal. But by the time it had finished, the flowers still hadn't arrived. So I spent even more time and money trying to chase the product of my time and money. Yet again, trying to be nice for a friend had cost me way more than I expected, and had nothing like the results I desired. That could have seriously ruined my whole week. But you know what? Just as I got into bed that night, I received a text message from the Playful One thanking me for my support. And of course, my pal and her mother-in-law had been grateful too, even paying for me to have lunch that day. 
And all this made me think, why stress? Okay, things hadn't gone exactly how I'd hoped, but the outcome was still the same. Happy folks around me that I'm honoured to call my friends, being pleased to call me their friend. And if I had to choose between the frustration of trying to be a good friend and not having any friends at all, of course, I would choose the frustration. I'd say the people in my life bring out the best in me and give my life purpose. And for that, I am hugely grateful. Then, over on Facebook, Cat Maltby reminded us that there are others who've made a far larger sacrifice for friends, family and countrymen. It has of course been the 70th anniversary of the D-Day landings this week, and so Cat wanted to express her gratitude for her grandpa, Joseph William Patterson Crothwaite, for the role that he played. So thank you to him, and all the other men and women who have served in the forces fighting for peace through the years. We've got other shout-outs this week from Claire Adams to Joe Wood for leading the Ipswich Hospital Running Club, even in the rain. Amy Peckham to her friend, or more accurately, her adoptive sister, Jess, who turned 21 this week, so happy birthday, Jess. And Becky Jones to the lovely staff of the Crown Medical Centre in Taunton. Cheers, guys. And over on Twitter... Brady Calkins was grateful to Samantha for listening to his ramblings. Heather Dubrow is grateful for the love of her life, who she was lucky enough to marry 15 years ago this week. And John suggested a thanks to Nathaniel C. Wyeth. It's certainly been a lot easier picking up a drink on the go since he invented the plastic bottle in 1973. Now it's time for our gratitude, which this week comes from Abby Robinson in Suffolk. And I'm going to let her introduce it for you. But before I leave you, I would just like to remind you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. It's completely free if you have a Gmail account, which is free to set up if you don't. And just by clicking that little red button on YouTube, you'll be helping us to raise some money for the men, women and children suffering from that painful disease of ME. And while you're here, don't forget to use that comments box below to let us know your ideas for shoutouts and gratitudes next week, or join us on Facebook or Twitter and message us there. Oh. And one last thing, if you ever feel like you've gone a step too far, just remember, everyone further down the staircase will now be looking up to you. Stay thankful, and ciao for now. What makes you happy, Abby? Thomas and his friends. Thomas and his friends? Yes. Is that the song that makes you happiest? Yes. How does it go? Thomas. <laughs> Right. James is vain but vain but lots of fun. Percy pours the mail on time. And Gordon lets us down the line. All the different roles to play around in the sheds of.